Okay, so uh, my name is Amit. I'm uh, managing the research team at Crosswise. And uh, we've recently been acquired by Oracle, and that means I had a lot of work changing all the logos in the presentation. So uh, appreciate the hard work. What I'm going to talk about is our uh, probabilistic, uh, the, um, probabilistic cross device matching uh, solution. We we'll talk about uh, a little bit about crosswise, what we do. We try to define the problem that we wish to solve and do some high level uh, uh, description of the way we solve it. And we talk a bit about the tools we use. So uh, Crosswise uh, aims to be the uh, cross-device consumer identification authority. What this means that we want to be able to identify consumers no matter which device they use to surf the web. It could be uh, a laptop, it could be a mobile phone, it could be a tablet, it could be a smart TV nowadays, it could be a co game console, it could be a car in the future. But we aim to understand that all of these devices belong to the same user, and uh, this is what we, this is the model that we develop. We were founded about the early 2014. Currently, we are about 20 people. Most of them are R&D. We have two teams, the research team and the development team. And we have a lot of customers and growing, and we've raised five million in funding, and we were acquired by Oracle on this April. So basically, uh, the user experience on the web is becoming more and more fragmented. People spend more time on mobile, on array of mobile devices, on tab tablets, on mobile phones. They can use mobile apps, they can use mobile uh, browsers, they can use smart TVs, and we wish to be able to identify uh, the relation between those devices. Uh, we, our product is a data as a service product. Um, we do a probabilistic cross device uh, identification with billions of devices. We update our solution weekly. Um, our customers are focused mainly on the ad tech uh, business, but also we have brands and publishers. Um, these are all, uh, you know, sales type uh, slides. We'll get to the very more interesting stuff. Uh, and this is a list, a partial list of our customers. One of them, actually, the first customer we have is Datalogix, which was purchased by Oracle, and then they went along and bought us. So uh, let's talk about a, a bit about our data. Um, sorry. Uh, we collect activity uh, data for billions of devices. By activity data, we mean we see which sites this device been to, what time, what IP was he uh, surfing from, um, we see desktop, we see mobile browser, we see mobile applications, but we're also starting to see other type of devices, as I say, like uh, smart TVs. We cover all of the US and uh, some parts of Europe, and we also have a truth set that allows us to build the model. And the truth set is, covers a small, rather small portion of the users, but because there's a lot of users, this, it's not that small. So before we solve a problem, we need to be able to define it. And one, the way we choose to look at this problem is by looking at the graph. We have a graph where each vertex is a device. It could be a desktop, it could be a mobile phone. And if we have an edge between two vertices, it means that these two devices belong to the same user. And the problem is very simple. Find the best subgraph that represents the world. Uh, for instance, this subgraph. Now, uh, uh, this sounds like a very interesting problem. You just take all the devices and their properties, connect all the edges, and calculate some kind of uh, uh, score for it, and then define the best subgraph criteria and just solve. It sounds very interesting, and sometimes people tell me it's an interesting problem in interviews, and then I end the interview there. Because what you need to remember, this is a very uh, large-scale problem. We have billions of devices and trillions of possible edges between them. So this tends to complicate, it, complicate things a bit. One uh, complication is how to define the best subgraph. We can, we can look at two aspects of the best solution. One of them is accuracy. We want only accurate edges in the graph, only edges that are 
uh, true to be a, a, a solution, but of course, if you only took the edges that we are sure of, we will lose a lot of scale. On the other hand, the scale, we want all of the true uh, edges to, be, to appear in the graph, but then we will also uh, add um, false edges. And when you build your solution, you have to play between those two uh, uh, ends of the, of the solution, between scale and accuracy. Here I played it, that's very nice animation, yeah. Uh, the solution, so I will give a high level uh, solution. Uh, we won't go into the actual uh, source code. Um, so we have several guidelines when we build our solution. We run in batch, we don't do online uh, predicting. We take all the data that we've collected the uh, past several months and run on this. We combine local meaning edge-based and global, meaning more graph uh, uh, neighborhood-based predictions. I will talk in more details into it. And we don't want to take into account all the possible edges. We have one billion devices and we don't want to compare all the uh, devices between themselves because this will generate a very large problem which will be very hard to uh, solve. And we want to give a solution that gives balance between accuracy and scale and the ability to play with them, to, to have some kind of uh, a knob that you can uh, turn to uh, uh, play between, this, uh, between, those between, between those things. And we want to be able to evaluate properly. A lot of times we, when talk with people, we see that being able to understand how to evaluate your uh, solution is a very uh, hard question. And we spent a lot of uh, time in these past two years just trying to understand how do you measure yourself properly. And one, one thing, key thing that I take with me along the way is don't be too optimistic. If you get very good results, that means something is wrong in your model uh, or in the way you evaluate. And of course, we should run in a, in a small, uh, in a short time. We don't want to run forever between, before you have a solution. And if you want to look at a blueprint of our solution, we have a feature collection where we collect the feature from the activity data that uh, we have. We do a local prediction, meaning we look at every edge separately and try to see what is the uh, probability of this edge to be true. And then we take the result from the local step and do a global step when we add other issues that related to the more general structure of the graph. And in the end, after we have the final result, we do evaluation of the result and measure our accuracy and the scale of the solution we have. And I'll go into details into each of these uh, four, uh, four boxes. We start with feature collections. When we talk about the device features, we have three domains of features, the who, the when, or where, and the what. Uh, the who talks about what type of device is it. It's a mobile phone, it's a mobile phone browser, or it's a mobile phone app. Is it a laptop? What type of operation system, operation system it runs? What type of brand? Is it an iPhone? Is it a Samsung Galaxy, or et cetera? The where and when talks about the IP the uh, device used to serve the web, the location if we have it, the time of day and, uh, we saw it, and what means the sites or the apps the device uh, have, be, have visited. We have a lot of pre-processing uh, for these uh, features, for instance, taking the uh, uh, user agent uh, string and uh, extract the who, uh, taking the IP and extract location, taking the sites and the app and build interest representation for this device. And I will uh, uh, step into this a bit more late, uh, later. And in the end, we want to take these features for, from uh, uh, the first uh, device and the second device and try to understand what is the probability of both devices uh, uh, devices belonging to the same users. To do this, we build edge features that are based on the two devices' uh, uh, features, and we actually solve the problem of, um, given the edge features for this pair, what is the probability of those two devices belonging to the same user. After this, we train a model, and then we predict the edges. Uh, and now, as I said before, we don't want to uh, do a prediction on all the possible edges between the one billion devices, or more than one billion devices that we have. So we need to do some sort of uh, elimination or filtering to only take the uh, most probable edges uh, into account. And we use uh, several mechanisms, mostly if we saw two devices sharing an IP, or two devices being in the same place at the same time, 
that makes those two devices more probable to be uh, belonging to the same users. Of course, it's not enough. They can be the same office or the same family, but this is a starting point for us. And uh, this is the, uh, from this, we uh, uh, generate the list of candidate edges that we use. And then we build edge features based on the device features. Um, we uh, can also take into account historical information, like what the model said last time that we saw this edge. And when we look at the edge feature, we actually have several types of edges. We can be an edge that connects desktop to a mobile app. It can be an edge that connects that connects mobile web to mobile app, etc. And we can treat each type of edge differently and build a separate model for each. In the edge features that we build, of course, it's again uh, divided into these three domains, like the device feature, the who, the where, and the what. The who can, uh, we can build features that say, for instance, these two uh, uh, devices have the same uh, brand, model, and operation system. For instance, if we want to match uh, surfing in a mobile browser and surfing on the same model, uh, mobile with in the in application, we need to have those two uh, devices basically being in the same actual uh, physical device. So we want to have this type of features. The where, when, say how many IPs were these devices these, these devices shared? Uh, did they visit the same location often? Uh, what is the activity patterns for these devices? Are they more active on uh, weekends or on weekdays? in the evening or in the morning. And the what domain is, uh, talks about the sites and app both uh, devices visited. We try to extract uh, uh, interest representation of these devices. And we try to find the relation between interest of two devices. So a simple relation can be these two devices visited the same sites. But we can also build more elaborate uh, relations, for instance, these two devices, uh, the desktop tends to be in one type of site and the mobile app tends to be in another type of sites and we can learn that these two uh, types are uh, connected. For instance, we can find out that people who are interested in cats are also uh, in their desktop, go to knitting sites on the mobile or other weird relations that may uh, come up that weren't, we can, couldn't think about uh, in advance. So a little bit about how we uh, build those interest vectors. Um, we take the sites and apps and we take the words that describe them from this description, the tags, the metadata, the actual uh, text in this. And we build a matrix of the uh, sites or uh, apps to uh, words. And then we try to find a lower dimension representation of topics. Uh, and we do a matrix factorization technique like LDA or an NMF to reduce this very large matrix of all the sites and apps and all the possible words to a, a matrix that connects this, the sites and apps to actual limited number of topics. So when we say interest, we don't talk about actual named interest, but more unsupervised approach when we have a set of uh, uh, topics that uh, may convey to our actual top topics in the real world, but we, don't really we aren't really interested in this topic is actually cats, and this topic is actually, I don't know, baseball. We take this, uh, we use this uh, uh, factorization to build the interest vectors based on the sites or apps the device has been to, and then we try to find relations between those two vectors. We have vector for one device and the vector for the other device, and we try to find relations between those vectors. This allows us, for instance, to connect two different domains, for instance, the desktop and the mobile apps, as different domains. The desktop went, uh, is surfing in sites and the mobile apps is surfing in applications. And this way, we, when, we build the, when we build the interest vector, we can combine these uh, two different worlds. Um, OK. So um, I'm doing it very fast because it's the last uh, lecture before, before the coffee break. Um, so we have this feature when we can train a model. We uh, uh, do this, the obvious stuff, taking our truth data and uh, dividing it into train set and validation set, training on the train set and seeing where we got to. And once we have a model, we can go and uh, do prediction on all the edges, candidate edges that were created before. Um, so uh, the first is, is very is relatively small the training and now the prediction is done on all the possible edges is again we have billion devices so it's a couple of billions of possible edges and 
we must uh, do these stages, the feature generation, the prediction, very efficient. And uh, 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 fortunately for us, we have a very uh, good uh, de uh, development team that built very cool uh, um, pipeline that enable us to do this very efficiently and fast. So this summarizes the local prediction uh, f um, stage. In the end, we get uh, uh, the graph as we saw before, when the candidate edges have some score that is related to the probability of this edge being uh, true, or th these two devices belong to the same user. So the question is what we can do with these edges now. One simple and naive way would be to choose a threshold and say everything about 0.5, for instance, is true, everything below is false, and then just mark all the, uh, the edges that pass this threshold as true and give it as a solution. But the local stage, as I said before, ignores the more general uh, structure of this solution. Uh, things like if three devices belong, to, if A and B belong to the same user and B and C belong to the same user, that means that A and C should belong to the same user. Um, or uh, we may have an edge that is a relatively high score, but this device has a better uh, uh, candidate that should be matched to it. So to answer this question, we use the global prediction. When we take the local prediction as an input, and we try to uh, take into account the global structure. Now, generally global uh, approach, taking into account all these one billion uh, vertices graph is hard to do, so we settled for smaller scale properties, looking at the immediate neighborhood around these devices. Um, and we refine the results. So we have several ways of doing this. One of them is the neighborhood properties for a pair. When we look at a pair, we don't always, not only looking at the X score, this actual edge get in the local stage, but we look at the environment. For instance, this mobile app got a very high score for this desktop, but it also got a higher score for that desktop. If we only look at this uh, edge separately, we might say, okay, this is a good uh, uh, edge. Uh, also, we look at it, and this will be a good edge, and then this way we can end up with a long chain of devices that are all connected to each other, generating a user with one million devices, for instance, which is not usually not true. Maybe some people have. Uh, so we take into account, we build a model that takes into account the scores around this uh, edge. What are the scores of the neighbors? How many neighbors there are? Are there other, any other paths you can go to from A to B? And what is scoring this path? All these kinds of consideration. This is the neighborhood uh, classifier we use. Another thing that we want to do is we want to uh, enhance transitivity. As I say, if we found out that D1 and D2 are connected, and D2 and D3 are connected, but we decide that D1 and D3 are not connected, this is weird, because if they, all three of them should belong to the same user. So we need to decide. Either one of the true, uh, uh, the yes uh, uh, matches are, is false, or we should add the third one. We want to, be, to give a solution which is tran transitive. So we uh, use the, uh, the scores that we get and uh, use some uh, clever mechanism to decide whether we should add this edge or maybe drop one of the others. And lastly, we want to be, give a solution that represents consumers and consumer actual person. An actual person have at most, I don't know, 10 mobile phones and two desktops and one smart TV and one, I don't know, uh, car. So we want to be able to take all the uh, stages before and generate uh, a users where a user can represent an actual person. And one, one approach we have here is we, as uh, we uh, divide the, uh, the edges into users, we try to calculate um, a score that uh, represents the quality of this user. And the quality can be uh, based on the scores of the uh, individual edges and the amount of edges that weren't included, and the amount of edges that were included, and stuff like this. In the end, we calculate these scores for, the, for each user, and we can use this score, for instance, to eliminate users that are less likely to be actual users. And this is the, uh, uh, the end of our global prediction. In the end, we give a, uh, this is what we do every week, we give this set of users saying, okay, all these devices belong to the same user, and we give it to our customers. The last thing I want to talk about is evaluation. So obviously, when you talk about evaluation in classification problems, you have the 
usual suspect, the precision and the recall that talk about the accuracy and the scale of the solution. And I'm not going to details, most of you probably know the definitions. The problem with these two um, metrics is they are based on the label set. And the label set, although it's good, it represents only a smaller portion of the general population. And it might, in probably not a random sample of the general population. So just basing yourself on those two uh, uh, metrics can, be, can lead you to uh, uh, false uh, evaluating yourself. And even if you take your label set and divide it to training and, uh, um, and uh, validation set, so you won't have overfit in the world of the label data, but what about the general population? You wanted to take into account other metrics that represent the general population and not just the label set. Because just looking at the label set will uh, give you a result as good as you like. Um, by selecting the proper uh, select, uh, label set. So we look at other uh, metrics that are representative of the general population, like the number of matches that we generated, the number of users that we generated, and inside them the number of unique match devices that we generated. And all these, uh, uh, um, all these metrics that represent the general population should have, a, should have a simple relation to the label metrics Assuming we have a, um, the label set is a, a random sample of the general population. But of course it isn't because the label sets are generated using some kind of process. And this process uh, uh, separates these devices from the rest of the world. So we want to take into account the difference between the uh, uh, label set and the general population. What I mean here is if we look at the features that we use to generate the solution, the label devices will have slightly, or in some cases not so slightly, different distribution than the general population edges. And this can harm your training, but most of the time if your model is robust enough, it won't harm your training, but it uh, certainly, certainly harms your evaluation. And what it usually do, it gives you either a very bad result even though the world is good, or a very good result even though the world is bad, because you look only at the on, only on a part of the uh, feature space, and not on all the feature space. So we want to be able to uh, compensate for this, and we do some, uh, un, uh, this is a process of bias, and we want to do some compensation for this. What we do is we um, train a classifier that know how to distinguish between the label set and the general population. As I said, there's a difference between the feature distribution, so we can be able to say, given a label set, given a label pair, how close it is to the general population. And if it's close, I want to take it into account when I count my errors, for instance. But if it's more further away than the general population, I want to take it less seriously and not give it the full error I might give it. And uh, we calculate some kind of weight, and we use this weight when we count the errors and the true answers for our model. And this way we get a more, I don't want to say real, but more uh, 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 a metric that is more representative of the real world. Uh, so that that's summarize our the blueprint for our solution. Uh, a little bit about our tools, because we use big data, uh, we have trillions of data points, a uh, billion of devices, we, every batch is starting from 100 terabytes of compressed data, and then we funnel it in the end, we get like 5K of data. And uh, we use all sorts of tooling uh, production to be able to do this, uh, like uh, we run on a dupe on Amazon AWS, we use a Pig uh, for data manipulation, we use Luigi for workflow management. Uh, this is for uh, production. In our uh, research team, we use mainly Python and uh, IPython notebooks for as our uh, research tool. We use a lot of uh, PySpark uh, for, to be able to take the data and um, massage it in, until it gets into a small enough size so we can do the analysis on. Uh, we use scikit-learn model and uh, XGBoost uh, models for our classification. And uh, we use uh, GraphLab for uh, graph-related analysis. Um, that's it. Thank you. And we are hiring if anyone is interested. <laughs>